In this section, we'll be looking at move. Move is used to translate and rotate things around a model. To start, I'm going to zoom in on this depression on the model right here. Now let's look at what move does and how it works. To start with, you can either select something to move and then hit the move tool, or you can be in the move tool and then select an object. Either way, you'll have the same result. Now with move, there's three different steps for moving something on a model. First, you need to select what you'd like to move. The second is you need to select the direction you want that to move in. You'll notice in the move handle that there's a blue, red, and a green arrow. These are three translation directions. Then there's a green, blue, and a red rotation arrow. These three rotation arrows let you rotate in different ways. So once you've selected what you'd like to move, select one of those six arrows. This lets Spaceland know which direction it should be moved in. After that's been selected, you can simply drag anywhere on screen or type in an exact value. Typing in five millimeters will move that face five millimeters. Now, one thing you might be wondering is that looks awfully similar to pull. You'll notice pulling this face and moving this face gives you a seemingly similar result. Let's think about it. What's the difference in what's going on? In this case, there is no difference. Moving a single face and pulling a single face gives you the same result. That's because what pull's doing is pull is offsetting that face. You'll notice a much bigger difference if we were moving and pulling on several faces. Let's go to select and box select this depression. Remember, as you're box selecting, you can pause for a second to see what's in your box to make sure it's big enough to contain that entire hole. Once I have all of these faces selected, Remember, if you look on the bottom of your screen, there should be six. If I go to move, move will take all of those faces, let me choose a direction to move it, and move that a precise distance. If I go to pull, what pull does is pull offsets all of these faces outward or inward at the same time. So remember, a good way to think about it is ask yourself, do I want this to become bigger or smaller? If so, use pull. If you want to change its location, use the move tool. But there are some differences even when you're pulling or moving a single face. Let's take a look at this round on the other side of the model. Remember, if you pull around, it's going to get bigger or smaller. If I move around, I'm going to change the location of that. So in this case, if I click the red arrow, the round is changing its location. It's staying the same size, but changing its location. Remember, if you're halfway through an operation and you'd like it to stop, you can hit the escape key on your keyboard. That will cancel that current operation. So what I want to do next is let's look at how that's moving. It's moving in the direction of the round towards it. However, maybe you don't want to move it in that direction. Because remember, there's a red, blue, and green direction for moving. You may want to set your own direction for moving something on a model. And to do that, we have tool guides on the left side of the screen that help you move these objects. One that I use a lot is our move direction. By clicking on this, you can set the direction for how something's moving. You'll notice that by hovering around an edge, the move tool ghosts and points in that direction. If you hover on a face, it's going to point normal to that face. So to move it in this direction, I could either select on this face or this edge. This will make it parallel to the edge or perpendicular to that face. Now you'll notice I'm moving that round in a specific direction that I'd like to. And I can type in a precise distance. Let's look at a few other ways we might want to move something and use our tool guides at the same time. 
I'm going to make a box select. Now remember, you can select, draw a box around what you'd like to grab, and go back into the move tool. Let's say I want to move something to a precise distance. There's two main ways to do that. I'm going to be looking at both of them. One is to use a ruler dimension. You'll notice our ruler icon here in the options is grayed out. Because remember, the first thing I do is select what I'd like to move, and the second thing I need to do is select a direction to move it in. The other thing we'll be looking at is up to. Up to lets you snap an object to a particular distance or location. So let's look at up to. And again, we'll pick a direction we want it to move in, the green direction. I'll hit up to, and I'll click on the axis of this part. Notice it moved it so that the move tool is lined up to the axis. If I pick the red direction and say up to this point, it moves it in the red direction up to that point. But you notice the important thing is the move tool is in the center of what I select. If you wanted this corner to be lined up to the center and lined up to this part, what you can do is you can anchor the move tool to that location. And again, I'm going to look to our tool guides to do this. Notice next to direction, there's a tool guide called anchor. Let's anchor the move tool onto that top corner. Now you'll notice the same thing is moving. I'm changing the same geometry, but I'm just referencing a new location. Red direction up to this point. Green direction up to the center. This is very helpful for moving and referencing a single location on many faces to go exactly where you need it to be. Next though, let's look at the ruler icon. Ruler doesn't snap you to a location, but it lets you dimension from one thing or another. So I can, in the green direction, dimension it to this face. Now it can be a specific distance from that. 20 millimeters, 10 millimeters, 25. Or in the red direction, I can dimension it to an edge or another face. Type in 25. So remember, using the ruler icon and up to and anchor lets you easily position the move tool and then move it or snap it to a precise location. Next, let's look at rotating an object. To do this, I'm going to clear my selection by hitting the escape key on my keyboard and I'm going to select on one face. Remember, I can translate or rotate geometry, so now we'll be looking at rotate. I'm going to first select what I'd like to move, which is the space, and then select the red tool for rotating. Once I select it, again, clicking anywhere on my screen, we'll start rotating the model. Imagine there's an, a line drawn through my cursor to the move tool. That's the bar that I'm rotating about. So if I'm very close to the move tool, any slight movement is going to cause a drastic change to the rotation angle. If I'm farther out from the model, the line's going to be longer, and I'm going to have a lot more control when rotating. Another thing to think about when rotating is that we have a rotation angle, such as 15 degrees. If I type in negative 15, it's automatically going to be converted to 345. If I type in 10, it goes back to the rotation of 10. Just like translating, it's important with rotating to have your move tool positioned at a precise location. We looked at anchor as one way to change the location of the move tool, but you'll notice that there's a yellow ball in the center of the move tool. This can be dragged to a new location. And once it's on a new location, its icon changes to a blue square.
best to indicate that the move tool has been repositioned from its original spot. You'll notice rotating about this edge still rotates the model, but you get a much different result. Next, we'll look at one unique thing about moving. Remember, if I move one face, the faces next to it come together, just like pull. However, with pull, if we select on the edge on the left and the right, remember, it pulls them straight back or straight in and ignores that influence. Let's hit Escape to cancel this action. Now we'll switch to the Move tool. When I move an edge with a face, the edges move as well. So you'll notice the faces on either side are changing their angle. This is useful when you want the face itself to stay the same size as you move it. Now the last thing we'll be looking at with move is going to be copying things and moving them at the same time. Just like you can copy text with the control key in Word, you can copy geometry with the control key in Spaceflight. I'm going to box select this depression again, and then hold the control key. This will allow me to move this geometry to a new location and create an additional copy of it. Now, when moving this geometry along screen, it's not linked to that original part. It's not a pattern. Patterns can be found inside of the create group if you'd like to create a linear or circular pattern. In this case, we're simply copying the geometry that's there. So if you do have to make a change or an edit later on, you can, and both of them won't change at the same time. For the last thing we'll do, let's look at combining two of the operations we've seen earlier. That's going to be up to and copying with control. So what I want to do is box select that original depression, and we're going to copy it to a new location. If I click a direction, like this green direction, and hit up to, remember it moves it up to that spot. If I undo and hold control key before I click this spot, it's going to copy it up to that exact location. And one thing I want to show you before we go is to remember, if you don't pick a direction for the move tool to go, it's going to try to move it up to all locations at the same time. For instance, if I move and copy by holding the control key up to this point without picking the red handle as a move direction, notice what happens is it moves it up to that point in the red direction and the blue one at the same time. Up to will always try to move in as many directions as you allow it to. So I hope you've seen how the move tool can be used to change the location of faces or edges around a model by both translating them and rotating them. Thank you for watching.